Well, the human toll of the conflict cannot be overstated. The Palestinian health minister reports 200 Palestinians killed, 59 of them children. More than 1,300 have been injured, and 10 Israelis have also died. And as we've seen, buildings in Gaza have been reduced to rubble, leading to frantic searches for survivors. Noor O'Day is a Palestinian politician and a founding member of the National Democratic Assembly, a political group seeking change. She joins me now via Skype from Ramallah. Uh, good to have you with us. Thank we you for having me. Uh, we have seen uh, flare-ups uh, over the par in the past, but of course, this is the worst violence we've seen since 2014. How is this time different? It's different, I think, in uh, in many ways. On the one hand, it comes uh, after four years of Donald Trump, uh, where uh, the right wing in Israel was able to uh, collect a lot of rewards. Uh, a lot of political achievements that uh, bring it further away from a possible uh, uh, peaceful solution, from an end to the occupation, and, and closer to an entrenchment of the far-right uh, ideology. Poor elections in Israel have yet to produce a change in that. Um, it, it comes off the back of an entire month of provocations and incendiary actions in occupied Jerusalem, where Palestinians were brought literally to a boiling point. Um, and then you you saw this collective, right? This collective sense of frustration breaking out everywhere uh, for Palestinians, uh, whether they were uh, Israeli citizens inside Israel proper or in the occupied West Bank, including Jerusalem, and now in Gaza. The, the another dimension, another difference, in my opinion, is the way the world is reacting at a popular level and, and perhaps with elected officials sounding more and more concerned, more adamant that a real solution must be reached instead of just talking about ceasefire. Uh, while, uh, regrettably, governments, including the Biden administration, seems to think that, uh, you know, uh, old formulas can be brought out of the drawer and, and reused as if nothing has changed in the past uh, years, as if we can just uh, make the gun stop and everything will go back uh, to being okay, uh, um, ignoring the fact that for Palestinians, life under occupation is not okay and it's not peaceful and there is nothing acceptable about it. So it would be just, you know, one, uh, one more way of postponing another round of frustration, another round of confrontation. As you say, there, there are more calls uh, from communities around the world uh, calling for a resolution, not just a ceasefire. We have uh, the United States, Qatar, Egypt and others trying to broker a ceasefire. But when you listen to uh, sources we're hearing from Hamas and, and also from Israel, there doesn't seem to be a desire right now to, to de-escalate. Well, I think it, it has a lot to do with the way this mediation is happening. It took the Biden administration days uh, to kind of get in the mix. Uh, they have yet to even voice concern, really, uh, a, a real concern about Palestinian casualties. They use the same formulas of standing by Israel, standing by its right to defend itself, and not really mentioning the fact that uh, half of Palestinian victims are women and children, that uh, these Palestinians are under occupation, and that this round of so-called violence is part of a pattern, a pattern that is consistent with half a century of occupation. I don't see that these uh, efforts uh, will fail. In the end, they will succeed in bringing about a ceasefire. But again, if something doesn't really change in the objective of this political movement, uh, by the U.S., by Egypt, by Qatar and other countries, then we'll, we'll just be back to square one, not back to calm, because again, for Palestinians, life under occupation is not calm. It's not peaceful. It's not acceptable. It's not easy. In fact, every detail of it is violent, because it's characterized by oppression and by dispossession and by having all the details of your life controlled by a foreign military, whether you're living in Jerusalem waiting to be uprooted from your home or fighting to keep your home from being demolished, whether you're in the West Bank, uh, trying to keep your, home, your, your land from being appropriated by the Israeli army, or whether you're one of the two plus million uh, Palestinians in Gaza living under siege for the past 15 years. 
that's the status quo ante that everybody wants to go back to. Um, and and I, would, I would be fearful that that's uh, what they would be satisfied with. I, I don't think that that's uh, good enough. I think we should be aiming higher, the, that Biden should be listening more to the Progressive Caucus uh, in his own party and to civil society, to thousands who took to the streets in the U.S. demanding justice. Without it, a real peace cannot, be, cannot materialize. It simply isn't possible. There isn't a people in this world who are, have known uh, to accept occupation and foreign control with, uh, uh, you know, uh, calmly and peacefully and without resistance. It just it doesn't exist. No, O'Day, uh, we appreciate your perspective. We'll have to leave it there for now, but I uh, hope to get you back on the program. Thank you.